out of state burrs, 1031 exchanges, turnkey companies, and sellers backing out of deals. We're going to talk about all of that right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. If you want the most transparent look into the real estate business, and then you want that coupled with the ability to actually do deals right here on the show with us, with a proven team at your side. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you see. Hit my team mail up, sales at holtonweiss.com. Give us your number. We'll talk to you about how you can get your own series of videos and work with us one-on-one -on -one, like my clients today, Larry and Tammy, husband-wife team from Arizona, right? And you guys have some questions uh, you're doing a 1031. You got a lot going on, okay? So let's jump into some of your questions, right? Now, the biggest thing for you two is, is you just got your cash out of this thing. And it, it, between the 1031 cash and what you already had, we're working with like $275,000, okay? We have like $275K at our disposal, right? You want to use that money, but you also want to stretch that money even further by utilizing some loans. But you have some concerns, you're hoping you could do three bird deals with that money. And yes, that's absolutely enough money to do three bird deals. But your your biggest concerns to me thus far uh, were, were, were with the 1031, right? Because you have to identify a property, right, with the 1031. You have to identify a property, and then you have to close on a property, but you're limited by an amount of time. Now, let me preface this by saying I am not. A 1031 uh, ex expert. I'm not a tax expert. I don't try or pretend to play one on TV, okay? i uh pretty sure my last year's tax return was something like 70,000 pages long um, at Holton Wise and all my various companies I own. And I'd be fucking lying to you if I, understood, if I told you I understood everything that was on those 70,000 pages, okay? Look. When you're in this business, aces in their places, right? You got to find out what you do best and focus your attention on that. And you need to outsource the rest. Do I understand all the tax thingamadoos in my 70,000 page tax turn? Fuck no. But I make sure I get the right people in place who do. I pay my accountant, uh, my accounting team, my accountants, I pay them a lot of fucking money, right? I pay them a lot of money every year, and they do a good job for me, okay? So as far as the exact intricacies of your 1031, you absolutely need to be working with the right professionals on that. If you want our referral list, we have people like that that can help you. Just let us know. Send us an email, sales at holtonweiss.com. With that said, and, dude, things are changing all the time, right? I, I know Biden just got elected, so, like, I'm pretty sure he's going to jack everything all up. But my working knowledge of everything right now on the timelines is um, you have six months to identify the properties, right, and then up to 12 months to close on them all, right? Those are your time frames. And you guys are a little bit worried about the sellers possibly backing out and screwing it up, right? Because if you don't hit your timelines, you don't get the tax savings, okay? So you want to do cash deals, bird deals, because you're nervous that the lenders will delay things, right, and possibly not give you loans and, and jack up your deals. That is, that's smart, right? You could definitely get things done faster, and if uh, a deal goes by the wayside, we have enough time to get you in, identifying another deal, closing another deal, right? It's only going to take about 10 to 14 days to close escrow on a cash deal in Cleveland. So I, I think that's a very smart move out of you guys. Great move. The other question you had for me uh, was you're concerned with, like, the sellers backing out of the sale at the last minute, and then you guys, you know, getting fucked. And you're asking me if, you know, there's anything we can do right into the contract that will prevent them uh, from doing that. And the answer is yes and no. Maybe. Not really. No. I don't know. No. Here's the thing. It's there, there, There's theory, and then there's real-life practicality. In theory, yes. I mean, 
in actuality, the contract is that thing, right? The contract lays out what they need to do. They need to perform on the contract. In theory, if they don't perform on the contract, you can possibly begin litigation. But in practice, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's not cost prohibitive, and it's prohibitive. And usually it involves throwing bad money after good, right? Uh, it's not the smart play, right? The smart play is, is where you're already thinking. Getting in there, getting ahead of the curve, right? Six and 12 months, those are our timelines, right? 14-day escrows, right? If we get in there quick, we have time on our side, right? So if we get in there, put in an offer, and then the seller's supposed to close in two weeks, and then they screw you, well, we're only two weeks into your six-month window there, right? So it's not that big of a deal. We just, you know, pick it up, move on, dust ourselves off, and get into the next one. In, in, in this business, right, having sold over $200 million worth of this stuff, yeah, do I do I see sellers uh, backing out at the last minute? Yeah, d uh, I've seen it a whole bunch of times. Is it like something I would consider like a high probability? No, not really, but it does happen, right? I don't know, maybe like, I don't know, one out of 100, two out of 100 times uh, sellers back out for, for this or that, and, you know, it is what it is, man. It's the cost of doing business. So I like your plan of, like, let's let's remove as many variables as we can. Let's just pay cash. Let's get in. Let's get it fast. Let's get it done. Let's get it quick. Not involve a bank till after the dust settles. So that, that would be my advice to you on how we handle that. Let's get in there and do it. Now, as for... Uh, your other investment goals, right? You like the Metro Health area and you like Section 8. And I got a bird deal for you that's going to hit all those uh, goals for you. And this is one that if the deal works out good, we'll get in there. We'll knock it out. But if it's not going to work out, we will know quickly and we will have enough time to find more properties for you so we can secure and close three bird deals before your 1031 time limit is up. Right after this commercial break, we're going to jump into the house. Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Let's jump right into this Burr deal. 4017 West 23rd, Cleveland, 44109. It's been on the market for 43 days. The reason it's been on the market for so long is, is twofold, right? Well, number one, screwing up my court here. Number one, it's fucked up, right? The property is just so fucking jacked, which is awesome for investors like you. Investors who want to make money, who want to do the bird deals. You guys are looking for fucked up properties, so that's great. But when you're trying to sell a property, what the... Man, my, my cord is still jacked up. All right, let me get the mic fixed. What that's going to do is it's going to cut the buyer base in half, right? If you're a seller, right? Who, do you, who, who can you sell a property to? You can sell it to two kinds of people. One, investors like you. Two, owner occupants, families, people that want to live there, okay? Well, people that want to live there, they can't do it, right? First time home buyers, stuff like that. They can't live in this property. It's never going to qualify for financing. Only cash deals are going to be had, right? Because it's not livable. Look, it's it's all fucked to total hell, dude. It's just totally fucking destroyed, right? It's it's just jacked, right? Like I don't even know what that crap is in there. That's probably crap coming from the ceiling, I'm assuming. Right, you got just grossness and mold and just you know that's a park, okay? But just nastiness. Like, look at these countertops. <laughs> like, what is going on here? Right, you got a hole in the ceiling right there. Like the the whole thing, it's it's just totally wrecked and unlivable. Right, there's no scenario where any traditional lender of any sort uh, w would finance uh, like a first time home buyer or anything of that nature. So the only people, the only people that could buy this bad boy are going to be real estate investors like you, right? So. Great for you, bad for the sellers, right? So that's one reason why it's been on the market for 43 days. The other reason is they priced it too high. They just dropped it down to 60K, which is getting closer, but that's still not the right price. Originally, I think they had it at like 70K. Those people are bad shit crazy. Ain't nobody coming in with $60,000 cash to take this down. Just like nobody came in with $70,000 to take this down, right? The price, the price I want to see you guys pay, 40K. At 40K, it makes a hell of a lot of sense because in addition to that 40K, we're going to need to spend about $35,000 putting this back together. What that's going to entail, right? It's going to get it to a Section 8 rent-ready standard, right? So we're going to go in, 
pretty much rip out the kitchen, rip out the baths, replace those with Home Depot Lowe's quality kitchen and baths, right? Home Depot Lowe's quality uh, fixtures. You know, you get the countertop, modern looking decor. Kitchen and bath are going to have matching vinyl allure flooring. The rest of the house, and they're going to have agreeable uh, gray walls, okay, agreeable gray walls with white trim. Rest of the house, also going to have agreeable gray walls, white trim. And under the carpets that you saw that were all jacked up, we're going to rip those out. There's going to be hardwoods because all these old Cleveland homes have original hardwoods. We're going to buff the crap out of those things, put down a nice deep, dark stain to hide some imperfections, make it look good, right? So the whole home, flowing hardwoods, agreeable gray paint, white trim, kitchen and bath, they don't have the nice hardwoods under there. They just have subfloors under there usually. So those are going to get modern looking matching vinyl allure. In addition to that, it appeared the furnace uh, was in usable shape, right? Okay. So that cosmetic stuff, that's going to be like 20 to 25K. I believe our furnace is going to be usable, going to be salvageable. So we don't need to spend the $3,000 in this. But I saw a lot of water damage. So I'm assuming we're going to need to spend some money on a roof, probably six or seven K there, possibly a hot water tank, right? So 20 to 25 is going to get us all cosmetic fixed up. Then I got another $10,000 budgeted for a roof and other stuff, possibly a hot water tank, possibly this, possibly that. I can't tell you exactly what it's going to need at this moment in time from the studio, right? This is just the desktop analysis. So we're just looking at it here. We're of course going to need uh, to get a general home inspection done for you, right? The video, that's the first step of the due diligence process. If we get your offer accepted, we go to the second step, which is getting a home inspector to go in there and, and check everything out, go through the house with a fine tooth comb. After we get that inspection, I can go over it with you and see if I see anything else identified that would blow our $35,000 budget, right? But it's not like I know there's going to be nothing else in addition to that, right? That's why I got about 2025 dollars for those cosmetics. And then I have 10 budgeted when it looks like I only know for sure we're going to need six or seven on a roof, right? So I got that extra little uh, buffer there because I know, you know, obviously there's going to be something, I bet. So we'll check that out. And if it turns out that the budget of 35K is going to be blown, that's okay because we'll go back to the sellers and we'll do one of two things. We'll either kill the deal or we'll get them to reduce price to where it works out because we need to be all into this investment for $75,000. If we're all in at 75, what that's going to get us is a $1,000 a month Section 8 tenant, right? So 12K is going to be scheduled to come in. After accounting for all the fixed and variable expenses, I presume this property will bring us home an NOI of $6,020. Now, this is the good part. This is where it gets great. This is why we as investors love, love, love seeing properties that are jacked the fuck up because we can leverage our cash. We're all in at 75. Well, now that it's all fixed, ready, rented, rocking and rolling, the bank's going to come in and appraise it, and a conservative appraisal estimate that I have for you is 80. Could possibly be higher, but I like to be conservative on these. 80K. So we created that $5,000 just with our work. Might not seem like a lot, but when you really play these numbers, folks, you know, that really can propel you to a huge cash on cash return because that would be a 20% return on your money, okay? That is a huge return on rental real estate. In addition to that, now you got a fully renovated, beautiful turnkey house, right? You get to extract that value, that equity. It's not like you're going to a regular turnkey provider and they're extracting that equity, right? It, it belongs to you. As for the neighborhood, I love this neighborhood, by the way. This is right near Metro Health, okay? Right now, Consider this high D, low C neighborhood, okay? So that's why Section 8 tenants, that's why they're imperative, all right? But you see, Metro Health, if I'm betting on a low-income area, I want to bet near Metro Health, okay? Here's the property. This is the whole Brooklyn Center neighborhood, all right? Do do do. Right here, this is the hospital right down the street, okay? Let me make this bigger so you guys can see. Okay, ch -ch -ch. Our property's here, right down the street, right there. If you're sick, this is the hospital you're going to. This is Metro Health. You could Google this. I'll put some links in the show notes below. They're investing 
a billion dollars into that hospital in the surrounding neighborhood. A billion. B, like boy, not million. A billion dollars into affordable housing, into this or that. People always ask me, like, yo, Cleveland's a cash flow market. What about appreciation, this or that, right? Look, I'm not much of a spec, spec play kind of guy, right? Honestly, if you're coming to the Cleveland market, you should be focused on cash flow. If you're trying to be like a spec player, dude, you should stay home in California or one of those type of markets, right? Those where the speculators are. People come here for cash flow. So I don't really talk on speculation all that much because speculation, it's speculation. You could be right, you could be wrong. But what I will tell you is this. If you're going to make a bet on a particular neighborhood, changing, going up, gentrifying, this is the neighborhood, the Brooklyn Center neighborhood. This is the one, Brooklyn Center, Clark Fulton area. That's the one I'd bet on. Why? Because of that billion-dollar injection of capital, right? You take a low-income neighborhood, you inject a billion bucks into it. Well, logic to me dictates that things are going to go up. In addition to that, just north, okay, just north, Ohio City, Tremont, Detroit Shoreway, Gordon Square, Edgewater, right? All neighborhoods that have gentrified in the Cleveland market. So we're bordering gentrified neighborhoods, and we're smashing a billion dollars in there. So, you know, I'm not uh, Mr. Speculation, but that appears to be clear evidence that if I'm going to make a bet, I'm going to bet here in this particular neighborhood, and that's why Holton Wise has been going heavy into those areas. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.